Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. All right, today we're finishing up our tutorial on how to make dynamic dashboard charts in Excel using either data tables or pivot tables, including slicers. So let's take a look at that dynamic chart creation. Uh, in the first episode, what we did is we showed you how you want to make your, set up your data. In the second episode, we showed you how to create a data table or a pivot table and also add slicers to the mix. Now we're going to go ahead and create our dynamic chart. All right, so the first dynamic chart that we're going to create is on a dynamic Excel table. So this is not a pivot table, it's just a standard Excel table. And uh, the first thing you want to do is, um, after we've added our slicers, is we want to arrange our data in such a way uh, that we have our data values to the far right and we have any of our groupings like month, year, category and group to the left of those data. Because uh, let's sh let me show you what happens is if we make this chart and we go up to insert and we choose a column chart and we'll do a 2D column chart. What you'll notice is that uh, the value that it is putting in is the numbers to the far right. So in this case, it's doing just the year and we want that as a grouping, not as our value for our dynamic dashboard chart. And then what it does with the values to the left is it puts those into a multi-level category as you can see, horizontal category as you can see at the bottom. So let's go ahead and clear that out and uh, here's what you want to do. First things first is if you have clicked on filter of any one of the uh, columns that you're looking at like year and you're trying to do what I'm showing you now you will get this error. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to move the year over to the left um, and so if I click on the header I go ahead and highlight my mouse or move my mouse right over to the edge of year. You see those crosshairs pop up. I can grab it, drag it, and drop it over to the left, and I will get this error. It cannot shift cells in a filtered range or table. So what you want to do is just first clear all of your filters um, by clearing your slicers, or you can also clear filters from up above uh, on the filters uh, for the normal table filters. So now that we've got our filters cleared, click on your column header. And we're going to grab the year and just by going right over the edge of the cell, drag and drop it to the left and we're going to drop it over on the far left. And so year is going to be at the bottom of our chart. Uh, month, we're going to drag that and since months are under years, uh, we are going to put that just to the right of year. And our group and our category are already correct because we have our groups and then we have our subset of fruit and vegetables uh, being our categories. So now we have everything set up to create our dynamic dashboard chart. The easiest way is if you do click anywhere in your chart, it will create a dynamic dashboard chart for you. However, it'll also include data that you may not want, like this left column of date. We don't want that one, so what I'm going to do is click on uh, B1. I'm going to do Control Shift right over to F1 and Control Shift down to get all the way down to the end of my data set. I'm going to go up to the Insert ribbon. I'm going to go over to Charts and I'm going to do a 2D column chart, 2D clustered column chart. And there it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and do Control X and just move this up so you can see it next to my slicers. Let's go ahead and put it right above our chart area, our table area. So as you can see, as I've clicked in this, it has done a multi-level category um, for the horizontal axis from B through E. And then our data is the rate. Um, as you can see right there. Uh, and so what we want to do is before we start filtering any of this, if we're using a data table, um, what we want to be aware of is uh, these filters, what they're doing is they are shrinking, um, or the slicers I should say, either one of them, what they're doing is they're, they're filtering rows and hiding them. So you see 20 through 27, or 21 through 27, 22 through 26 are hidden. And what that's doing is that is shrinking my chart every time I click and expand. It is sizing with my columns and rows and I don't want it to do that. So to change that, right click on your chart, go into format chart area and then over in your chart options you will see there's properties. So it's got size and it's got properties. Move and size with cells but we want to move but don't size with cells. No, we really want to don't size or move with cells. We always want it to be in this area right next to our slicers. So I'm going to click on that close it. Now if I filter anything, my chart will stay the same size and it'll stay in the same place 
uh, it won't shrink by the row size. So now you can see that as one way that you can create a dynamic dashboard chart using slicers and data tables and it was very simple and very easy. Uh, if I add any data to this data table, what it will do is it will uh, add it to the bottom of my chart. So um, it now becomes easily editable uh, and dynamic. So you can see as I'm selecting data here, it's just modifying our chart now. Um, one thing that you may want to do is uh, click on your chart and perhaps uh, increase the column width. There's lots of different personal choices. However, the data tables, the, the charts are nice, but once you have multiple selection areas, you notice it's, it's not easily to, to able to format this. Uh, down here and below. So you might want to move, say, these years into being other data series so that you can compare 2013 to 2014 in corn. Um, however, you're just not able to do that with the limited uh, nature of data tables. So let's go take a look at a pivot table. So this is a pivot table we created in the previous episode. And what we want to do is we've already got our pivot table created over here. And we can uh, move this so that you can see it. And um, what, we, what we have here, as you can see, we've got uh, the pivot table has all sorts of different selections um, that are essentially uh, creating what you see over here of January fruit that by the 2012. Um, and as we change our filters, uh, the values for that pivot table will change. Um, so all we need to do is click anywhere in our pivot table. We can go up to our insert ribbon, go to our chart selection and choose a 2D column chart. So now we have that same um, chart that you see before. Now, since the pivot table, if we come over here and we select any different values of our pivot table uh, for in our slicer, um, you notice the chart is not uh, shrinking or growing. We don't have to change that other setting um, because the cells of a pivot table are not hiding. Um, the row height is not going to zero, so there's nothing affecting this table. Um, it's just changing the data in the table itself. Now, some other things that you may want to do with a pivot table that you didn't have to do with a data table is you may want to come in and delete your legend. I'm going to click on it and hit the delete key. Then you also have these other filters that are in here. And since we have slicers, don't really want to see these filters, which work just like slicers do. Um, however, just don't really love that. Uh, so I want to hide these, get rid of them. You can click on, right click on any of them. And you'll notice that it says hide all field buttons or hide value field buttons. If I do that on the ones below, hide access field buttons or hide all field buttons. So uh, you can do that by clicking on them. And if you click anywhere in the chart, you're not really going to see that, or at least I don't see it anywhere in my list. So right click on those buttons and uh, do hide all field buttons. So now we've got our field buttons hidden. And uh, I like, um, and uh, Peter showed me this in a lot of the charts that he does, and it really, I, I like the way it looks. So I want to just right click on any one of those formatted series. And I want to change this gap width down to something uh, a lot smaller. So just that chunkier feel really gives me the sense that this is a, a really nice chart that we have here. Uh, so you can see we've got 2011. Let's add 2012 in there. And you can see our multi-category is, is, does a lot better. Uh, we've got 2011, January, and February, and March. So we've got each of the first quarter here. Fruits and vegetables, apples and bananas versus beets. So uh, our chart's looking pretty nice. But um, one thing, that one advantage that we have over the data table is if I come over to my pivot table fields, my pivot chart fields, I can grab, like, let's say, let's grab year and move it up into the legend series. And once I do that, um, and we may want to add the legend back at this point in time, so I'd go up to my design ribbon, add a chart element, legend, and I'll put it over on the right. And you can see blue is 2011, red is 2012, um, and if we wanted to do months and we cascade it up over into the legend series, um, it will come up with each one of those months, so January 2011 versus February 2011. So you can, you can kind of play with that as you like. Uh, it just depends on what data you're trying to get out of that, but that's just some other flexibility that you just don't have with the data table. Likewise, uh, changing your field settings that you have. Instead of doing an average, maybe you want to do a count, um, and you can quickly change that on the fly uh, versus um, 
having to modify the data in the table. So um, hopefully that helped you understand how to make dynamic pivot tables and data tables within Excel using slicers and uh, making them all dynamic and, and giving you some other options as you create your other tables and charts for your dashboards with your ex executives and your company. Once again, this is Steve Equals True at ExcelDashboardTemplates.com. Please head on over there to find some other great posts. Also, consider subscribing to my video channel so you're sure to get the next post delivered directly in your inbox. Thank you.